She was buried alive at nine years old. This is the story of Jessica Lunsford. Jessica Marie Lunsford was born on October 6, 1995 and lived in Florida. She was the biggest daddy's girl and loved her stuffed animals, going to church and going on motorcycle rides with her dad. On February 24, 2005, Jessica's dad arrived home in the morning after going on a date the night before. Jessica was left in the care of her grandparents. Her dad noticed Jessica's alarm going off which was unusual. He went into her room to shut it off only to find Jessica gone. That's when he realized he had forgotten to lock the door before leaving the night prior. The only thing missing from her room was Jessica and her favorite dolphin stuffed animal. Her father immediately reported her missing to the police. Jessica was last seen at 10 p.m. the night before when her grandparents put her to bed. No Amber Alert was sent out because they didn't know what vehicle she was taken in. They brought in search teams and K-9 units to search for Jessica. Dive teams were searching nearby bodies of water. Despite all these efforts they had no clues or leads. Authorities announced they didn't suspect Jessica's dad or her grandparents and that they were certain she had been abducted. As protocol in all missing children's cases all of the sex offenders in the area around Jessica's home were questioned. Through these interviews they announced they had a person of interest who was acquainted with Jessica from family, social, school, church circles. That person was John E. Vander Kui, a 46-year-old registered sex offender. He had been out of town since Jessica had disappeared. He was apprehended in Georgia on the 17th of March. Kui had a long criminal record and had been arrested 24 times within a 30-year period. He had served time in prison and had his license suspended. He was also a registered sex offender who had assaulted children before. The day after he was arrested he confessed to abducting, raping and murdering Jessica Lunsford. He went with investigators to show them where her body was. She was buried only 200 yards from her home. Kui said he had broken into Jessica's home around 3 a.m. the morning of her disappearance intending to burglarize the home. When he saw Jessica he changed his plan. He took her to his half-sister's mobile home, which was close to Jessica's house. He kept her alive and held her hostage over the weekend. He assaulted Jessica repeatedly during her captivity. It turns out investigators had actually came to the mobile home during a door-to-door -door initial search, but they didn't check inside the house. If they did they would have found Jessica who was being kept in a closet. Her abductor would taunt Jessica by showing her news reports on her disappearance. After a couple days he told Jessica to get inside a garbage bag and he would take her home. Instead he took her to a pre-dug grave and buried her alive. When Jessica was unearthed she was clutching tightly onto her stuffed dolphin. In the dark, alone, with her dolphin she suffocated to death. John Kui was found guilty and was sentenced to death. He died while sitting on death row in 2009, just four years after Jessica's murder. Following Jessica's murder her family campaigned for states to pass Jessica's law. This law mandates a minimum sentence of 25 years and a maximum of life in prison for first-time child sex offenders. Florida passed the law and other states have introduced their own form of Jessica's law. Rest in peace Jessica.